In boat building, this is referred to as a rolling bevel. It's always handy to have a pocket-sized bevel gauge so that you can be checking these bevels uh, frequently. I couldn't find one that I liked very well, so I made this one. So stay tuned, and I'll show you how I did it. Well, to get started with our mini bevel gauge, I collected a few materials. Uh, I purchased this uh, six inch stainless steel ruler. Um, it had, it's nice because it has uh, inch markings on one side and metric on the other. Um, picked up a, uh, this is a piece of eighth inch brass welding rod, uh, a knurled nut, and a uh, flathead brass bolt to go with it. I had a little bit of uh, a scrap piece of brass lying around and I have this really nice piece of quarter sewn walnut. So the first thing I did was I put together a little drawing of what the dimensions and so forth that I wanted it to be. So in this drawing uh, I decided I wanted the overall length to be four inches and so that means the, the blade would be three and seven eighths inches, and the body would be two and three quarter inches. So the first thing we need to do is to uh, cut a slot in uh, the stainless steel. I cut the walnut blank down to three quarters of an inch thick, which is the width of the blade. And I kept uh, the blank uh, fairly thick so that when I was cutting the kerf wide enough for the blade to fit in there, it wouldn't split on me. The kerf of my handsaw was the same thickness as the metal blade. So I used that to enlarge that uh, saw cut kerf the proper thickness and then uh, also it was I was able to use that to cut the 45 at the bottom of it. I then cut it down to the width of the finished handle. I backed the brass with a piece of plywood so that it wouldn't chatter when I was cutting it. I placed the end of the ruler that I had cut off in the handle so that it wouldn't spring on me while I was cutting on it. pre-drilled both brass pieces together close to the finished size holes. I did this off of the handles because brass heats up quite a bit from the friction of the drill. This heat would make the glue let loose.
I used a piece of cardboard as a spacer to drill the reference hole for the other side. I drilled the large hole at a really slow RPM so as not to build up too much heat from the friction. Same thing with the countersinking. I then ground the head down very slowly, stopping often to cool it on the cast iron work table. On the finished sanding, I started with 120 grit and worked my way all the way up to 800 grit. Well, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Uh, I kind of almost exceeded my own expectations. Uh, in uh, full disclosure, uh, this was not the first one that made. The first one I made, uh, the handle was a little thicker and clunkier, and I just didn't like the proportions of it. Uh, it wasn't as nice and uh, thin as the one that I uh, did. And it's uh, also, I, I made the handle just about uh, a little bit longer, about an eighth of an inch longer. Um, one of the nice things about handmade tools is you get to make them exactly the way that you want the tool to be. Um, and you know, when you're going to the bother of doing it, you might as well make it a beautiful object as well. It fits nicely in my pocket, and uh, I know that um, I'm gonna enjoy it for years to come. If uh, you know of any tools that you'd like to see me make, uh, leave a comment below. Uh, I'd be interested in hearing that. Um, you can also keep up with me on uh, Instagram, at Art of Boat Building, and um, I usually post things daily or at least several times a week. Uh, so by subscribing or following me on that, you can um, get a heads up on what the next project is going to be. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.